Passage 4. Listen to part of a lecture in a biology class. Algae. Today we are going to talk about algae. First, you must remember that alga is the singular and algae the plural. Algae are aquatic organisms. They are plant species that may be uni or multicellular, and they contain chlorophyll, thrive in wet conditions, and usually lack roots, stems, and leaves. They can range in size from tiny single cell organisms to huge giant kelp. The term algae applies to several groups of aquatic organisms, which are capable of photosynthesis or manufacturing their own food. Algae are interesting because they can be colorful. Most people think of algae as green seaweed, but algae can not only be green, but can also be red, brown, or blue green. The main focus of this lecture will be on the types of colored algae. Later lectures will be directed to other characteristics of algae. Brown algae are chromists. The name chromista means colored. Most chromists are colored, but some, such as mildew, may be colorless. They do not store their energy in the form of starch like other plants, and in addition to containing chlorophyll, they contain other pigments which give them a golden or brown color. Some chromists are not photosynthetic, and in the past were classed as animals or fungi rather than as plants. However, today it is recognized that all of the chromista may have developed from an independent evolutionary line from a common ancestor of plants, animals, and fungi. And thus the new kingdom of chromista was born. Even though there is not complete agreement on how all of the chromists are interrelated, new research is being conducted which may explain the interrelationship between them. Green algae is very diverse. There are more than 7,000 species of green algae and they grow in very diverse habitats. They contain two forms of chlorophyll, capture light energy, and manufacture their own food. They are also mainly aquatic, but don't share a common relationship with the chromists or the rhodophyta organisms. Some of you may have seen green growth attached to rocks in the ocean. This may be sea lettuce. Both green kelp and lettuce are examples of green algae. Their sizes can be microscopic or giant, and they are very important in aquatic ecosystems. Kelp is a chromist, and in fact, coastlines of continents which are cool and temperate often have an abundance of kelp forests, which are important sources of food for marine and freshwater organisms. Chromists can occur in freshwater or saltwater. Some are planktonic and float near the water's surface, while others attach themselves to the bottom of the ocean and become so large they are referred to as forests. There are also many fossils associated with this group because of the ability of the organisms to secrete calcium carbonate, or lime, deposits. Because of the algae's ability to secrete the carbonate, some of this group are thought to be responsible for some coal and petroleum deposits. Red algae are red because of a pigment which absorbs blue light and reflects red light. They live at deeper depths than most algae because of their photosynthetic pigments. Most red algae live in tropical marine environments rather than in fresh water, but some do live in fresh water. Red algae are classified as rhodophyta and are important for different reasons. They are important in the formation of coral reefs because they secrete a shell of carbonate around themselves. Scientists aren't completely sure about how the organisms precipitate the calcium carbonate, but because they do and because fossils have resulted, it is believed that they may have an association with petroleum deposits. In some areas, the red algae, or coralline algae as they are referred to, have been known to contribute more to the composition of reef structure than coral does. In the South Pacific, giant clamshells have been found which contain a pink encrusting material on the outside of their shells. This material is an example of the calcium carbonate which has been deposited by red algae. Red algae can also be an important source of food. Nori is a red algae and is an important source of food for Asians. It has been cultivated in Japan for hundreds of years, but the industry started in the 1950s when a discovery was made about the different stages in the organism's lives. When it was discovered that one phase of the red algae's life cycle was considered an edible stage, cultivation of the organism for food began on a much larger scale.
Nori has many benefits as a food source. First, it is easy to cultivate. Second, it is high in vitamin content. And third, it is high in protein content. The last colored algae I want to talk to you about today is the blue-green algae. Blue-green algae are classified as cyanobacteria. They are aquatic bacteria and make their own food. They get their name from a pigment which captures light for the process of photosynthesis. They are considered bacteria and are quite small, usually microscopic. Although they are usually unicellular, they often grow into colonies which are large enough to be seen. They are some of the oldest known fossils in the world and are important providers of nitrogen fertilizer used in bean and rice cultivation. Cyanobacteria live in plants and form the chloroplast with which plants make food. Some of the cyanobacteria are good food sources because they are high in protein and can be cultivated easily in ponds. In the U.S., these organisms are considered health foods, but in the ancient Aztec culture of Mexico, they were a dietary staple. While some of these algae are considered nutritious, others, such as pond scum, are known to be toxic to both humans and animals. And some can cause problems to those who come in contact with them. If you have ever been swimming and later developed swimmer's itch, you have probably encountered some blue-green algae which has caused your skin irritation. On that note, we will conclude today's lecture. See you next class! Now get ready to answer the questions. You may use your notes to help you answer. Number 18. What aspect of algae does the professor mainly discuss? Number 19. What does the professor say about brown algae? Number 20. What is the evidence that green algae is diverse in size? Listen again to part of the lecture, then answer the question. And some can cause problems to those who come in contact with them. If you have ever been swimming and later developed swimmer's itch, you have probably encountered some blue-green algae which has caused your skin irritation. Number 21. What does the professor imply when she says this? You have probably encountered blue-green algae. Number 22. Why does the professor mention blue-green algae are classified as cyanobacteria? Number 23. How does the professor explain the purpose of the lecture?